success with Tanya because she stayed, right? Um, but I'm nervous that we allocate based on a person rather than maybe we come up with an equation that is the person, the people in the pharmacy, the pharmacist, the pharmacy techs, the space that's more broad so that when there's flexibility and movement, we still continue to say this time is being used towards HIV, but it's not specific to a person. Like that's the way I'm leaning, but I I would really want to hear like on the ground level, does that make sense? Or do you have a different idea? So somebody, Vika, do you want to take that on? I personally like that idea, Shauna, um, because uh, let's say we dedicate only one person and that person is not here and it's really hard for all the staff members to know. Um, and I think it's everybody should know and, and, and I like that idea. I'm in agreement. I think you could have like the designation between technicians and pharmacists. <laughs> So with that being said, I mean, one of the challenges about that is that we will have, I mean, Vika, you you know, you know that you have to train your pharmacists and your technicians for them to know how to do that. Yes, I think it's be- it works out better if they all have general idea, because let's say, for example, the technician typing and uh, they don't know what's right and white, what medications uh, mm-hmm. that should build on the right and white. And yeah. this happens in the past, um, and it's it's get you know the it's went to the patient and there's a copay patient got upset uh, because they didn't know how to deal with it deal. and okay. and I I don't I I can't oversee like four or five people what they do um, and when it comes to me there was a problem um, so I think is everybody should have a general idea on how to do. Mm-hmm. This so, and one action item, Michael, could be that program and pharmacy put together a basic onboarding for the Hilltop Pharmacy. So pharmacists maybe get a little more in-depth de- in and the techs get a little bit less. Or if I say it differently, the techs get more practical stuff, right? And then um, the pharmacist gets more history or background but it's like a little package so that you're not recreating it every time someone comes up of the basics of Ryan White, 340B savings. Here's the policy when meds are not covered. This is what yes. you do so that you guys just have it as an onboarding package. And then maybe we renew, we review that on an annual basis or a every six month basis to make sure it's up to date. Like that would be like a Kendria role. But I think that would make it easy so you're not recreating it every time you bring somebody on board. Well, one of the things that I may say about that is that I do like the idea. So that way, if somebody <laughs> leaves, it's not attached, you know, it's not attached to that name, um, then what we have to recruit. But uh, my concern though would be when we are, do we then allocate, you know, we can, I mean, we can allocate like 1.0 so, I mean, do we use that as a 1.0 FTE from the pharmacy and 0.2 to the, so we can share it, we can say for all of the staff members that are working, uh, let's say we have about four, four or five, I mean, with staff members that are working there, we can do, we can do that 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2 you know, to make it 1.0 or something of sort to make sure that we are able to get that number of FTE. Right. You know, yeah. No, it's a, that's a, I mean, like to, to break that up. Yes. So, so your, let, let me ask you this question with, with the, with the 1.2 from the grant is, are, that is, are they being paid to dispense there or to do interventions with the the patients? The 1.0 tech is in the pharmacy and the 0.2 is a clinical pharmacist who's up in the clinic with me um, doing med reconciliation and annual right. med reviews. Got it. Okay, great. So they're doing like an 
an MTM kind of uh, process. And the 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 farm tech is is dispensing in the pharmacy. Okay, gotcha. So I'm I'm wondering and I don't I don't know this. I'm I'm not a pharmacy expert here, but I'm wondering is there a methodology that a standard methodology that pharmacies utilize to uh calculate their uh dispensing fee to cover costs um like i i was thinking could we do a ratio that says um maybe in a year the number of hiv scripts over the total scripts um filled at ch at chc then that would be over the cost of the the staff fringe space supplies maybe um indirect um for the pharmacy i would take out the the drugs in this like your your purchasing of drugs because you're trying to recover um, the labor costs um, and the space cost of your your program, that could give us, well, first of all, the, the scripts over total scripts could give us a percentage mm -hmm. um, that we then could apply to the total cost. And that, that may be 8%. I don't know. It may be eight percent, and that's what we that's what would happen then on a monthly basis is that whatever percentage we determine is the percentage that is billed to Ryan White that goes back to pharmacy and however pharmacy deals with that on their budget, if you want to do two 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 um across the pharmacist um that that is pharmacy's role in crafting that budget based on the the fill data. I, I'm just putting that out there. I think that's what's happening, Michael, on that JV80 already. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I, is that think, what you're I think you're right, but we're not sure what that eight is. Yeah. And then we also had in our former um, tracking tool, we had like supplies and all of that, I think, is booked on that JV80. So maybe right. when we talk to finance today, if they can pull one of those up, that might be helpful to to review um, in, right. in further detail. The other thing I uh, just wanted to chime in on is I think that would is what you're saying is the best solution, because if not, then and folks are on the grant, um, I think that 0.2 times five is a lot of time and efforts. Um, so just to be mindful, if we are putting folks on the grant in that capacity, um, you know, looking at our time and effort and how that has to be tracked and not based on ideals, but actuals for the time and effort. So, and, and in reality, um, do you, do, I, I would imagine that the Michelle type farm tech is not working a hundred percent on HIV. Correct. Right. So she's You're right about that. She's filling other scripts. Um yes. so that is um that is not allowable under the grant. It has to be solely dedicated to the the grant. Um where the um Danielle type position why she's in the clinic, she's probably doing 20% of her time in the clinic and the other 80% might be down in the pharmacy or whatever. Exactly. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. So, and I see, so I see that and then I see that 8% hitting the line and I'm wondering, are we paying for Michelle twice? Um, because we have Michelle on the grant at 1.0, and then we have that.